Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody uh, to this I Can Cafe session on pages. Um, thanks for watching, but before we jump into that, uh, something that you are going to want to use with pages and other programs um, are the international keyboard settings. So if I go to settings here, oops, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Just click it open. All right, if you go to settings and then on the left hand side, general, all right, and if you scroll down to International, which is right here, at the top you'll see Language and Keyboards. If I go Keyboards, I can add a new keyboard. And there's a whole lot of keyboards that I can add. There's Actually, there's quite an amazing number. But for example, let's say you wanted to add Hawaiian, just for the fun of it. There you go. Um, let's say you wanted to add another one, and let's say you wanted to be French. And there you go. It's as simple as that. I'm now going to get out of my settings. Okay, and let's hit Pages. There it is right there on the bottom. When you first load the, the program here, you click on the app, you're going to get to this landing page, and this is where all of your documents are. Now, if you are someone who's a heavy Pages user, um, you're going to get a lot of documents here, and it can be very easily overwhelming. So I might suggest you do the following. If I hold on a document, and I drag it over the top of another one, just like with apps, you can make a folder. How cool is that? So this is going to be folder one. How creative, right? Uh, and I can say done. Done. Okay, so now I've created a folder. You could create a folder for each class. You could create a folder by topic, whatever you want to do. But it makes it so that you don't have an endless list of documents scrolling down your page. All right, I'm actually going to uh, show you a few of the things that you can do in pages by going to the Getting Started document. And you have this in your pages uh, app as well, so it's not a big problem. Um, so here we go, and it'll talk you through a lot of this stuff. So if you just go through this, it'll tell you how to do a whole bunch of the stuff that you need to do. So I'm not going to tell you everything, but I do want to give you the general orientation. All right, so here we go. Up at the top here, you're going to notice Documents and Undo. If you hit the Documents button, it's going to take you right back to the landing page. Undo, oddly enough, if I double tap a word, and let's say I want to make it bold, and so I turn it bold, I say, aha, oops, I did not want to make automatically bold, so I'm going to go up to undo, and it undoes it. Okay, I don't think that's a big shock to anyone there. Okay, um, he, down here at the top right, you see that you have the paintbrush, the plus sign, and the wrench. And I say, why don't we just go through each on their own? Okay, um, let's go ahead and let's... Let's pick a paragraph here. Triple tap this paragraph like it says. Okay. And I've selected the entire paragraph. Let's see what we can do with it. I'm going to go up uh, to the paintbrush. All right. In the paintbrush, I'm going to go to the left and I'm going to go style. First thing I have is font. All right. I can reduce the font. Okay. If I wish. All right. Let's go down even more. I can change the color of the font. Okay. What else can we do here? Oh, interesting. All right. Um, I can also go down to font, and there's a lots and lots and lots of fonts built in here. Okay, so I can pick Palatino, for example. Um, if you are importing a document, you want to make sure that it's in one of the fonts that is um, supported by um, the iPad apps. You just want to go through and, and scroll through that. Okay, so there's font. And I've got an Avenir 15 point. Okay, sounds good. Um, you can all kinds of things. I can underline the whole bit. I can say, no, I don't want to do that. I can strike through the whole bit. No, I don't want to do that. I am actually even going to take it off bold, but I am going to make it um, italicized. You can center it, you can right justify it, left justify it. And these are what we call style guides here, um, which means that they give a size of type or and a, and, a, and, a, and a style to the whole text here. I'm going to make it body text, for example. That's usually a smaller text. Okay. Um, and you have all these various um, options. And that's what it means when they talk about style. Let's go one over to list. Um, if I want to make this a bullet list, that's what I can do. Now, if I get out of this menu and I go... This is another bullet point. Okay, and I can keep doing this um, as I go along. So I can uh, make that a bullet list. That's a nice one. Go back into the paintbrush. Okay, and again, you have 
Um, you can make your bullet lists, dots, images, whatever you want. Um, you can make it more than one column. Okay, you got to be careful about that. That can get messy really quick. And this is where, if I go back out here and I triple tap this, I'm just going to drag this down here. I'm going to go back into the paintbrush and line spacing. I want to go 1.5 spacing. Double space. Let's go back to 1.5. All right. So depending on what your teachers ask you to do, that's how you're going to change the line spacing. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Well, let's go down here a little ways more. Hide the keyboard here. Ooh, working with objects. Okay. Ooh, look at the pretty butterfly. What can we do with the butterfly? I can move the butterfly around and check this out. You've got um, text wrapping going on. I can also, with two fingers, I'm holding it right now with two fingers, and as it explained, you can move the butterfly around, okay, based on the wrapping. So you have, uh, Pages is really good at working with text and wrapping around um, images and all that stuff. I'm going to move it all the way over here, like this. Okay, perfect. I'm going to do that. Okay, I'm actually going to also make it, let's see, what else can we do with it? I'm going to make it smaller. I'm going to drag on the corner and I'm going to make it a smaller butterfly because that's, that's, that's how I want to roll with the butterfly here. Okay. Um, let's see, we're going to tap it. Uh, what do we have here? Let's tap the image. Um, let's see. Formatting here. Um, if I tap the butterfly and then I go to the formatting, I can do all kinds of things. I can flip it vertically. What happens with that? Oh my gosh, I just flipped it vertically. All right. Go up here. I'm going to arrange it. If I go up to arrange or style, you can choose to have a background on. You can choose to have a shadow. You can choose all kinds of options for it. Um, you can put a border on it. What kind of border on it? Do I want uh, a purple border. Why not? And we're going to say, all right, that's done. And you get a purple border around your butterfly. Okay, whatever you want to do. That's entirely up to you. All right, so adding inserting images, I'm going to go to return, and I'm going to simply now move over to the plus sign. And this is where you have the ability to insert things. And if I want to insert an image, um, you have to give uh, pages access to your camera roll. But if you do that, you've got lots of images. I'm going to insert this lovely little image of the, um, of the atom, okay? And say, okay, sounds good, but this is way too huge. Uh, we're going to make this much, much smaller, okay? And uh, like I did with the butterfly, I'm going to just two fingers, and I'm going to rotate that around. Of course, it kind of looks the same either way. Um, and you can play around with it however you wish. But you can insert images that way. I can also, if I wish, you can insert tables. And you have lots of different styles of tables to, to choose from. You can make them as large or small as you wish, okay? And you can add, okay, the number of rows. You can add the number of columns, okay? And then you can begin to uh, place your data in the table. So the, the plus sign allows you to insert tables, charts, okay? If I wish to insert even a 3D graph, okay? There are all kinds of things that you can do with 3D graphs, all right? Um, you can do bar charts. Let's choose a bar chart. All right, and there's your bar chart. And, okay. okay. Click on that. You can make it large, you can make it small, however you want to do this. Okay, edit data allows you to change the data inside of this table that affects your graph, okay? So this may be very useful if you're dealing with math and science classes, okay? So again, you have the ability to move this anywhere you wish, okay, in the document, all right? All right, I know there's a lot here. Let's take a moment here, though, and uh, I'm going to go, let's go to the plus sign one more time. Oh, shapes, there we go. Shapes can be very, very handy, especially if you're talking about things like arrows, so if I click on an arrow, all right, and I add it to my document, I can scroll down and I can move this arrow anywhere I wish. I can make it, I can squish it down like this. I can elongate it, okay. Do all kinds of things. Two fingers, and I can rotate it, and I can move it anywhere I wish, okay. So you can add a lot of graphics 
and other items to your documents. But now, let's go over to the wrench. All right, and I'm going to go down. If you see the one, two, three, fourth one down, document setup, one thing you might want to think about is how you set up your header and footer because your uh, teachers may ask you for headers and footers, and it's as simple as tapping. Um, and if you notice up here, I've already edited this before. Okay, select all. Um, I'm going to uh, say, well, I'm going to cut that. I'm going to say, uh, okay, what do I want to type there? I'm going to say header. There we go. And over here, I've already got the pages in there. Okay, footer, same idea. Okay, I'm going to select all. I'm going to cut it. I'm going to say, this is my footer. And over here, okay, um, we've got page numbers. Okay, let's select all. What if I cut it? And then I want to put page numbers in the middle one here. Page numbers, there we go. And I want it one of however many I have. And I go up to the top and I click done. Okay, now if you look up at the top here, whoops, done, sorry. You've got header at the top and the page number, one of 12. If I scroll down, I've got this is my footer at the bottom, okay, just like that, which I think is pretty cool. Let me readjust the size of this here now. It always does this when I get out of landscape portrait form. There we go. All right, so now um, we've got headers and we've got footers. What else do we need to worry about here? Uh, style guides. Oh, um, so there. those are most of the menus that you need to worry about. I'm going to go back to documents now. And I'm going to pick this document here. And this is just a random document that I had. I'm going to go back to documents. If I hold my finger over this, there are a couple things I can do. Notice the menu changes at the top left, a little square with the arrow in it. That's pretty universal. If I click that, I can email it, open it in another app, whatever. So if I click email, I can choose any one of three formats, pages, PDF, and Word. And oftentimes, people are going to want PDF and Word. So if I select PDF, it's going to turn it into a PDF. Bada boom, there you go, and you can email it to yourself or wherever you need to go. I'm going to cancel that, delete the draft. If I hold my finger on the document again, all right, if I hit the same icon, only this time I want to say open in another app. Very important. I get the same three options. What do I want to do? Well, let's say this time I want to convert it to a Word document, and it's then now going to say what app do you want to open it in? And I'm going to say, oh, Quick Office or wherever I want, Good Reader. Um, let's go Quick Office. If I do that, it's going to immediately open that program, and there we go, it's a Word document. You can modify it now in that particular program, save it, archive it, organize it, however you want to deal with it, because many times people cannot accept a pages formatted document. Okay, so we'll get back out of that. Um, all right, I believe that is uh, a great introductory tutorial to pages. I encourage you to use that getting started with pages document that you already have there. It's very helpful and it takes you through and allows you to do a lot of the things that we just did. Um, if you have any questions, you know who to ask. Come find me, Mr. Cully, or anybody in Navigating Ninth Grade or on the tech team. We'd be happy to sit down with you and help you out. All right? Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next ICANN.